it's Taslyn here from Tassel Koshi Creations and for today's video I'm gonna be hopping on this Barbie train! Woohoo! Barbie! <laughs> okay so for today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to crochet a Barbie inspired belt um so yeah let's get into it hey um I will be doing this um just as I go, I don't, I'm not working with a pattern, I'm just jumping right into it and let's get started guys, come on! Hey guys, so for the materials, um, this is what we'll be using for today's tutorial. Um, so I have some yarn here, I'll be starting with the scrap yarn that I have um but they're both the same I don't know why on camera it's coming out like I don't know like a darkish pink but this is like this looks like hot pink off camera um so I'm gonna refer to it as hot pink um I don't know on camera it's coming off like a weird pink but anyway this is a charity double knit pull skein this is the yarn that I'll be using it is 100% acrylic um it is 233 meters and 256 yards. Um, it is 100 grams. It recommends a 4 millimeter crochet hook. And this is the color Tiger Cerise. So yeah, I'm not sure why it's coming out like this. But anyway, we will leave it to that. Um, I'm pretty sure you won't be needing more than a ball for this. But we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, you'll be needing a crochet hook for this pattern. Um, I'll just be using a three and a half millimeter crochet hook just so that I can get my stitches nice and tight um, and then you'll be needing a tapestry needle to sew in those ends and then you'll also be needing a pair of scissors you'll also be needing a pair of scissors um, a tape measure this is optional you could just um, what would you call it you could just uh, when crocheting up the belt, you could just wrap it around your waist and just see where you're happy with the length. And then you'll need some belt buckles. So I really like this one, this Diamante buckle here. But it's not really a belt buckle. This rod in the middle is fixed. So I'm not sure if this is going to work. My idea of this possibly working, but I don't think it's going to work. I would crochet around here or crochet the belt and then sew it so the one end around here and then you would put the belt around you and then you'd feed it through here and in the other side and pull tight but I do feel that the belt will work undone because it has nothing to secure the belt in place um but yeah I don't know uh we'll see how this goes um so yeah if that fails I did get two d loops here it comes in a pack um so this is what we're using for the belts so these will just be the fabric belts um the loop belts um i don't know if you know what i'm talking about uh but yeah some other belts will have a buckle in the middle here um kind of thing but yeah we'll be doing um a loop belt so you'll be needing some d loops or rectangular um loops or whatever you want to call it um, so yeah, I think that is it for the materials. Let's get started. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to take our yarn. We will wrap it around our fingers once and then twice but cross over to form an X. And then you're going to take your crochet hook and insert underneath the front loop. And pick up the second loop and then take your magic ring off of your fingers and then pull on your working your working yarn and tail end to tighten up that magic ring. Sorry, that slip knot. The slip knot, not the magic ring, the slip knot. Okay, and then what we will do is um, we'll chain a number of chains that is the length of the buckle that we want to use. So we will chain, uh, I don't know, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, two, nine. Yeah, nine stitches could work. So nine chains could work. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to twist your chains towards you. 
you're gonna twist your chain towards you and then insert your crochet hook underneath the back bump then you're gonna yarn over pull through then you're gonna yarn over and pull through to again you're gonna insert into the back bump of the next chain yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through two Insert into the next chain yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and you'll just repeat this placing one single crochet into each um, chain across and since we chained nine our stitch count should be eight so that additional chain is just a turning chain and you can't exactly work into that chain that is right next to your hook <laughs> okay anyway so we will now turn and we'll just work a few rows of just one single crochet in each stitch around um, so that we can uh, what would you call it so that we can loop this around our buckles and then sew, sew the strap um, secure over the buckles, if it makes any sense. So we would insert the buckle through the one side and then fold this over and then sew it. So I'm just going to go back and forth for a couple of rows, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe 8, 10 rows, maybe 12 rows. Just so that I can get the, the length that I want to... Uh, to loop this around my, my D loops. Okay, so you can just go off and continue. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue crocheting the number of rows that I need that until I think that is uh, the right length before we start doing the texture of the belt. Okay. okay, so I have done a total of 10 rounds. So I'm just going to take my D buckles and then just insert the one side into these belt buckles. And yeah, so I think I am pretty happy with that. I hope my sewing machine will get I hope my sewing machine will be able to get underneath here. Should be. No, oh, should do, I should say. Yeah, I think it could work. Actually, I think I'm just going to do an additional two, two rows, just to be certain. So now I have 12 and I'm just going to test out my belt loops again. Oopsie. Yeah, that's more than enough space for the foot of the sewing machine to go through. Okay, so now that's what it should be looking like now. Um, so I have done a total of 12 rows, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 rows. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add some texture to our, uh, what would you call it, to our belt. And the way in which we are going to do that is we are going to do, um, tiny mock popcorns. Um, so it's very very simple, so we'll just turn our work and we can maybe do single crochet in the first two stitches and then we will chain four. So one, two, three and four 
and then go straight into um, the next stitch and just do one single crochet into the next um, to the next three stitches and then chain four again one two three and four and then place one single crochet in the remaining two and we'll turn our work and it should look something like this I know it may look a little bit funny but what we are going to do is we are just going to keep working into uh, the single crochet stitches and what that is essentially going to do is it is going to push the the chain uh, the, the chain loop forward and it's going to give us this like little like popcorn thing so we can just continue crocheting into each single crochet stitch making sure that the popcorns all pop out in the same direction like that so that's what it looks like I think it just adds like a little bit of texture obviously you could do whatever stitch you want to do but I think that this popcorn stitch could work very very well yeah so you can just keep doing this and you can keep alternating um, like where you place the popcorn stitches, the mock popcorn, uh, the mock, mock popcorn stitches. Come on, why don't you want to go and do the stitch? Okay, I bet. went into the stitch. Yeah, so again you want to make sure that the chains pop out of the direction that you want it to yeah so you got to make sure that you make the chains pop out into the one side then we'll turn our work and then just continue as normal so So you can just alternate where you place the popcorn stitches. It's all preference. You just want to uh, create a little bit of texture, a little bit of variety. Um, come on now. There we go. Again, you just want to ensure that all of the popcorn stitches um, face all in the same direction. So yeah, this is just a texture and variety. Could even do one popcorn in the entire row and like not place any more popcorns in that same stitch sorry in that same row if you wanted to if you, you know so you could just even it out you know you could even um, instead of instead of doing like a popcorn on each row you could skip one or two rows not skip one or two rows but you could crochet like two single crochet rows in between some of the popcorn rows um if that makes any sense and then again just make sure your chains are popping out in the right direction yeah so i think i'm gonna turn and then I'm going to place another popcorn all the way on this end now.
but yeah you could just continue just repeating this process um changing where you place your mock popcorn stitch in every row or every second or third row um, it all depends on you what you uh, want to do yeah I thought this could be a very very fun way of creating texture and making it look a little bit cool As I said, you could do a different stitch if you wanted to. I think this is actually going to come out really, really fun. Yeah. so that is what it's looking like um, so as I said you could you can um, alternate where you place the popcorn stitches um, or the mop mock <laughs> mop the mock popcorn stitches um, so yeah you can continue your belts in this fashion um, again ensuring that you push the chains when you're doing um, the single crochets near the chains or after the chain Make sure you push the chain towards the front um, where all of the other popcorn stitches are and then you're left with a nice clean back on the yeah you're, not, you're left with a nice clean back on the left <laughs> okay so you can continue that and um yeah you can continue with this until the belt is is um, a little bit bigger than your waist measurements and uh, yeah if you want you could lay out one of your favorite belts and um and just align the uh line up the belts the crochet belts with your belts um and then yeah just see how much further you need to go or you can measure yourself this is optional you could measure your waist and then just keep measuring your work as you go instead of having to get up and constantly measure it around excuse me around your waist um so yeah you can just continue crocheting this the length that you want and then i'll come back and show you what the belt looks like when it's finished okay okay guys um so i am back and i have finished crocheting the length of the belt of my belt um so i just compared it to um one of my other belts that i normally use that's the same type of belt that i'm making here actually um it's a fabric belt loop belt loop uh, <laughs> fabric loop belt thing whatever um so yeah i use that for comparison's sake and um yeah now i'm finished with the actual black like, crocheting the length of the belt and now what i'm going to do now um is now we're going to crochet all the way around but what i am going to do is i am going to end off this yarn because i only have a little bit left of this yarn and um this yarn um even though on camera it's coming up with somewhat the same shade or maybe not okay so this one um i tried crocheting with this one and my other little ball of yarn ran out um thankfully oops my bad thankfully i had another um 
I had another little ball of yarn that I had left in my stash. Um, that was a little bit smaller than the other one, like quite a bit smaller actually. Anyway, so um, I tried to crochet with this one and as you can, can kind of see, this one is a lot brighter than this one. Or it's a lot lighter. And um, as soon as I, as I joined that yarn, I realised that uh, <laughs> I realised it's actually not the same shade. Um, and luckily the small little ball of yarn that I had left was more than enough to finish the belt. Um, I had put on this new ball of yarn over here. So I managed to get quite a bit done with it, which I'm quite stoked about. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my scissors and just snip my yarn. This is only because I'm now transitioning to my other ball of yarn. But you don't have to do this if you still have enough of your of your yarn and whatever um i am just simply doing this because my other ball of yarn is a different shade okay so i'm just going to yarn over and pull through just to end off i'm going to put that one side and then i'm going to get my yarn ready okay so then i'm going to grab my yarn and i am going to just crochet all the way around this so I think I am actually going to start over here and essentially what we are going to want to do is just place one single crochet in each stitch all the way around the entire belt just to give it a nice neat finish around the edge that is all that we are going to do for now is just crochet neatly all the way around the edge of the belt and we are literally almost done we literally just need to crochet around the belt sew on the buckle and then we have our, our finished belt isn't that just cool oh, isn't that just awesome i am super super stoked with how this is coming out i really really love the look of this yeah, so I'm just going to go straight and just start putting one single crochet into each corner stitch. So not into each corner stitch, into each stitch on the edges. And I'm just going to work over this tail end um, from the yarn that I cut. Okay, so you can just continue this um, placing one single crochet in each stitch around or at the beginning and end of <laughs> of the single crochet rounds from the belt okay so you can just continue with this and then i'll meet back up with you when you have worked all the way around the belt and ready to join um at the beginning okay Okay, so now I am back at the beginning now. I've finished crocheting all the way around um, my belt. So now what I'm going to do is I am just going to slip stitch to the beginning. So I am just going to insert my hook into that first stitch that I did. Yarn over, pull through, and then pull through the loop on your hook to do your slip stitch. And then if you are going to be sewing this on by hand with a darning needle, then you'd want to cut yourself a bit of of a tail um like probably about a 30 centimeter tail maybe um so yeah you just want to cut your 30 centimeter tail end if you are going to be sewing this by hand and then you can end off and then what you would do you would grab your darning needle okay i'm just gonna show you here oh wait i've got the wrong end anyway <laughs> My bad, um, so, my bad, so, um, you are not going to, um, leave a tail end because this is the wrong side of the belt, as you can see, um, you would want to, uh, you would want to sew on this end of the belt where we did the first, um, uh, the first 12 rows, just a single crochet, um, so my bad, I do not, um do not snip uh, your uh, do not snip a long tail end um yeah <laughs> my bad 
Okay, um, so yeah, so I'm just going to snip my tail end here, and then I'm just going to weave it in, so I'm just going to take my tail end, and then just insert it under some of these single crochet stitches, making sure not to come out the other side. Then you just want to weave this in and out of your stitches, back and forth a few times, just to secure it. Yeah, so I'm going to go back in this direction here. Okay, and then what we can do is we can just snip that yarn short. And I'm just going to snip this other little stubby tail end from beginning when I worked over it. Okay, so that is the actual bolts done and complete. Now it's just time to insert the buckle. Okay, so I'm just going to um, try and sew this now. So I'm just going on a simple straight stitch here. has turned out okay oh, and by the way I had my stitch length on seven and I had used um, uh, I had used my very stretched out uh, stitch here so this one here and this is the result. Isn't that just beautiful? Okay, so it actually worked. Okay. That's great. So it worked. Okay, so I'm very stoked with that. Um, this is pink, but obviously this is a very large shade of pink, so you can see it. Um, but yeah, so that is the bolt done. Let me get rid of my sewing machine, and then I can show you the end result. So here is the finished bolt up close. So this is what it looks like. Um, I think it looks quite nice. I mean, yes, it's like a little bit untidy with my with my back stitching there. Um, but yeah, I think it came out quite all right. I think it came out quite okay. I think it's sturdy. I think it's strong enough. Um, so yeah, that is the bolt. And now it is time for the reveal. Yeah, so now I am just putting the belt on, so I am just feeding it through the belt loops of my jeans and just trying to feed it through. Um, the little uh, mock popcorn stitches does get sometimes a little bit caught on the belt loops and I just need to help feed it through the belt loops. Adding uh, the belt as I go, uh, making sure that it fits alright. And then um, I looped it in. And uh, tightening up the belt and then um, I fit it through the opposite side and um, was trying to figure out what to do with the loose end uh, I just like left it there for a minute and then I uh, tried to um, fit it through the direction that you would normally put the belt on and then I thought no it doesn't look right having the back side of the belt showing so that's why I just tucked it on the other side um, so yeah this is what it looks like um, I'm quite happy with it, it's quite stoked, isn't it just beautiful? I love it so much. Um, it is really, really nice. I just like tuck that in into the belt, I think that looks much better than it's tucked in. <laughs> Here is what it looks like with my jeans and my full top. Um, I think it looks gorgeous, I think it's like the perfect little accessory to wear when going out. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and happy crocheting!